uh, Acts uh, chapter 2. What does it mean in practice to live as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, in a sense, that is the question that Luke is seeking to answer for us in the book of Acts. Or rather, he is seeking to show us. Uh, What's happened so far? Well, Jesus has come back from the dead. Jesus has ascended to heaven to be with God the Father. The Father and the Son have sent the Spirit to live miraculously inside the lives of every follower of Jesus. Uh, The Christian says, uh, Lord Jesus, uh, we want to live for you. Uh, We want to live a life where we are constantly turning our back on all that which you have said is wrong. No matter what our friends think, we are seeking you. We are seeking your purposes. Uh, And Lord Jesus, you've gifted us forgiveness. We are now free to serve you. You have gifted us your spirit. We are being transformed. We're being empowered. We're being enabled. But where does the church fit into this? Uh, I'm always hesitant about giving language lessons in front of you, (laughs) um, because I'm a lousy linguist, but I'll have a go this morning. Uh, The word church in Greek is ecclesia. Hence, we use the word ecclesiastical for something churchy. Uh, And ecclesia comes from the verb to gather. As we keep telling ourselves, no church is not a building, no church is not even the event I come to on a Sunday morning, rather the church is the group of us that gathers. Church is the community that I belong to. Church, my title this morning, church is the community I was made for. Uh, And Luke now, directly after describing the momentous coming of the Spirit at Pentecost, gives us a little six-verse flavour of church that we can expect to see example after example of in the coming chapters. Uh, So I wonder what you think of my headings. Um, Will you see over the next few minutes whether you think I have captured what Luke is describing A meeting to learn and worship community, a loving and sharing and giving community, a drawing people to Jesus community. Is that what Luke is describing? A meeting to learn and worship community. Verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching Just let me stop there. That, when we think about it, is a shock, isn't it? If you were to ask your friends what they think you do on a Sunday morning, I doubt very much that the top of their list would be to be taught. I imagine they'd say, well, you go there to say some prayers and maybe to do a bit of singing and maybe to take communion. Uh, and do some other religious things we don't quite understand, and to be with your uh, with your friends. Yes, they may mention the Bible in there somewhere, but I would be surprised if being taught was at the top of the list. But in the Bible, being taught is top of the list. Why is that? Because we cannot know anything about God unless he teaches us about himself. Uh, Surprisingly, in the Bible, and you might want to go away and think about this, hearing from God even comes before prayer. And we think, really? Yes, because we cannot properly speak to him before he speaks to us. For how else would we know what he's like and and how we should approach him? 
but when he does speak to us, we feel drawn to speak to him. God has revealed himself to us uh, through the prophets, but primarily through the Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles were witnesses of the Lord Jesus, uh, and in Acts, we'll home in on this next week, we see the apostles doing exactly the kind of miracles Jesus did. Uh, Peter told us last week uh, that God was authenticating the Lord Jesus through signs and wonders, and now we see God authenticating the apostles. And by the inspiration of the Spirit, they have recorded what they saw and heard for us. Those first Christians needed to learn from the apostles, for how else would they learn about God? How else would they learn what pleases God? How else would they learn how to respond to God with their lips and with their lives? Uh, We're in exactly the same position. We too devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. Devote's quite a strong word, isn't it? Whether it's revisiting a sermon when I get home, or finding ways to meet up with others midweek to read the Bible, or reading a few verses from the Lord day by day. Uh, John Stott, one of the most influential leaders in the Church of England over the last decades, uh, he writes this of a learning church. Its pastors expound the scripture from the pulpit. Its parents teach their children out of the scriptures at home. And its members read and reflect on the scriptures every day in order to grow in Christian discipleship. The pastors expound the scriptures from the pulpit, parents teach the scriptures at home, and we all read and reflect on the scriptures daily. A a learning church and a worshipping church. Uh, my, 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 uh, my mind uh, went to the wise men from the east. Uh, the more they learned of Jesus, the more they wanted to worship him. Uh, one of our Christian, uh, one of our Christmas readings, Matthew two, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. A meeting to learn and worship community. Verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And if you look down, verse 47, and praising God... Praising God not just with their lips, but with their lives, their lifestyles. Worship expressed not just in a church building, but also by the living of a holy life in the home and in the workplace. A a consistency between our words on a Sunday and on a Monday, that's worship, isn't it? This is the community I was, I was made for. A, a meeting to learn and worship community. Secondly, a loving and sharing and giving community. Uh, verse 44, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Now, this is not a surprise to us. Uh, Jesus in John's Gospel said that the world would know that we are his disciples because of our love for each other. 
Why are we to be a generous people? Primarily because we recognize God's amazing generosity to us. And we realize that it would therefore be a complete nonsense for us to not be generous to each other and others. Verse 45, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. Uh, Were they selling all of their possessions and putting it into a communal pot? No. But if they saw a believer in need, they didn't hesitate to empty their bank account, sell what they did not need. Just as many of us would do for our children in need. Just as many of us would do for people that we love. The early church grasped the fact that fellow members of the community that we were made to belong to are people we get to love and care for. I said, Hanford, how do we love and care for each other like this? Maybe one of the challenges is that for us to properly love and care for someone, we need to know them. Harold, in our congregation. I know Harold, but not really. Which is probably okay, because not everyone can know Harold really. It's probably okay, so long as Harold is both known by someone in our church family, and he himself truly knows someone in turn in our church family. How do we get past, and you know what I mean by this, how do we get past the superficial superficiality, I'll say that word, superficiality of the 30-second snatch conversation on a Sunday. How do we get past that superficiality? Uh, How do we get to the position that when you say to me, how are you, that I feel comfortable and secure and loved enough by you to say, actually, I am feeling lousy, and to be honest, I am feeling a complete failure and I need help. I wonder whether our challenge is that often each of us have time or wisdom or money with which we are able to help others, but we don't know who needs help, and in any case, we don't know how to help. And at other times, we need help, but we don't really know who to ask help from, and we feel just a bit awkward about it. What is the answer to this? Well, it can only be that we build closer relationships. We are more involved in each other's lives so that we are better able to know how and when to help and we feel just less awkward about the whole thing. But practically, what do we do? Verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. Uh, They broke bread, they ate together. Yes, that may well be a reference uh, to what we call communion or the Lord's Supper. But undoubtedly, they went round to each other's houses simply to eat and enjoy being together. They met formally, they met informally, they met in the temple in Jerusalem, they met in each other's homes. I'm not aware that they had Costa or the Man in Space or Trentham Gardens, but I'm perfectly sure that had they had those things, they would have met there as well. Sundays are great, I love Sundays. But Sundays, I do not think, are sufficient to build the sort of caring relationships that the community that I was made for invites me into. 
a meeting to learn and worship community, a loving and sharing and giving community, a drawing people to Jesus community. Uh, Last line of the chapter, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Uh, This community wasn't inward looking, its outward focus, its concern was to save people. Uh, Luke's repeated use of the word save reminds us how crucial it is that people encounter Jesus. The nicest people we know in ways we do not realise are from their hearts rejecting God. Am I being judgmental in saying that? No, I'm merely saying that they have the same pressures that I do. Following Jesus on my terms is easy. But following Jesus when he says things, causes things, does things that I don't like, but he nevertheless tells me to trust the goodness both of him and his ways feels impossibly hard. And yet Jesus has come to save me. To save me by taking the penalty of my rejecting God. To save me by transforming me. To save me by promising me an eternity of light ahead as opposed to an eternity of darkness. People need Jesus even if they think they can do without him. People need Jesus even if we think they can do without him. People need saving every much, every bit as much as we do. And so, and, and so we read verse 47 that our hearts dance and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is a community that God uses to save people. What what caused that community to grow in number? Well, straight away we want to say that it was a work of the Holy Spirit. He worked inside people, causing them to see Jesus and want to know Jesus. But from a human perspective, what did the onlookers hear and see from that community? Well, they heard the message of Jesus, but what did they see? They saw the people of Jesus. They saw a meeting to learn and worship community. They saw a loving and sharing and giving community. They saw a Christian community and was attracted to them. Verse 46, every day they, this community, continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Onlookers heard the message of Jesus and they saw the people of Jesus. They saw a people who really cared for each other. They saw a people who would not let any of their number be in need. This is a world of loneliness and selfishness. There is not a week that goes by that I do not hear of both of those things to a gobsmacking proportion. I'm sure you're the same, especially the loneliness. 
God is creating his people into a relationship, yes, with him, but also with each other. Hence, he is creating a drawing people to Jesus community. This is the community I was made for. I I become a Christian. I consciously turn away from my thinking that I can live my life on my terms I turn to Jesus and I say to him, I want to follow you no matter how hard what you say is. Please forgive my past. Please transform my present. Please guarantee my future. And unexpectedly, I find not just Jesus, but the community of Jesus. The church of Jesus. I unexpectedly find that there is no such thing as a solo Christian. I'm part of a community that I was made for. A meeting to learn and worship community. A loving and sharing and giving community. A drawing people to Jesus community. So what do I do? I live as part of this community. Community. 